Why is Carillion a sign of things to come in the UK with facilities management and buildings, organisations? Um, I want to explain something for from a few years ago, and it's what a lot of FM companies have done, including Carillion, including Mighty. There's several people here in Spain that uh, Mighty took their contracts. Um, but we're not talking fair competition here. We're talking Rob Peter to pay Paul, in my personal opinion. Because what you do is you go in and undercut people. And this is what happened with the Houses Association I was working with years ago. They had a working contractor that was struggling because financially it wasn't viable. Mighty went in there and undercut... Uh, sorry, it wasn't Mighty, actually. It was another company that has actually gone into receivership already. Um, they went in 40% below the next bid. And I was sat there talking with the directors of this housing association and said to them, this isn't going to work. Um... They said, well, why? I said, well, the contractor that's going now when is going bankrupt because this contract is not viable. You've just brought somebody else in that decided to do it 40% cheaper. Why do you think it's not viable? Well, they promised us they can do it. Now, from a business point of view, you may actually think, well, that's the lowest bid, take it anyway. But... From a housing association view, the same as I would say with the NHS and others, you have a um, ethical agreement to deliver service to your customers, which in this case is housing for people within the housing association. If you know it can deliver a service, you've already failed. And the reality is, it did fail. Um, it it went bankrupt as well. Um, now, there's several people here in Spain that had the same happen. Uh, I think it was Sandwell Council and one of the Birmingham area ones, at least it was definitely Sandwell and there was definitely somewhere else in Birmingham. Um, they got undercut by 50% and put out of business. But what they do, you see, is they'll go in undercut it by 50% and say, oh, we're going to do it with technology and all this rubbish that they come out with. But then they will turn around and go back to the original contracts and say, you will carry on with this 50% less. And as a friend of mine quite rightly told the person who <laughs> come out with this from Mighty that was stood in his front room, you should leave my house now while you still can. Um, because ultimately... They're robbing Peter to pay Paul, in my opinion, because the contracts are not viable. So the only way you can actually make them viable is by getting another one and another one and another one. And then you go to the markets and say, "We're well, look at our growth. We're growing really fast. And people go, oh, yeah, it's all great. But it can only run for so long, which is why Carillion collapsed. Mighty, I'm far behind. Um, ISS, similar. Capita, similar. Um, but at the same time, they've created these massive Ponzi schemes um, where, I, my personal opinion, I'm calling them a Ponzi scheme. Um, but at the top, they are siphoning the cash off like no tomorrow. Um, even if you look at it through a consultancy basis and look at what they're siphoning off, you look what um, Richard Housen took out of Carillion. It's millions. And bearing in mind, it's been failing for a long time and it's been taking a lot of money out for a long time, along with other directors that um, have a lot of things I can actually say, but I'll keep to myself. But I will say the current current debt that you're seeing with Carillion, I would say there's a good chance of just doubling it um, once everything actually comes out in the open. Now, the other side of this beam is... These people are in charge of very important buildings. They're in charge of the hospitals. They're in charge of the surgeries. They're in charge of schools and all these other bits. But they've gone through systematically destroying everything. This is why they're sitting there complaining. You see in the newspaper, firemen having to feed school kids. Do you know what? The local authority created that because the local authority gave them a contract that could not make any money. And on top of that, they allowed companies that were forced into these restrictive contracts to get stuffed with up to 120, day, 120 days of non-payment. So, and the crazy thing is, a lot of time, 
there is advanced payments for the FM companies for setting up the contracts. So they may have actually been paid six months in advance on some of these contracts, and the first thing they do is pay everybody 120 days late. Um, and obviously this pyramid gets to a point where there's no money left. And people will say, oh, they lost construction projects, oh, this, this, they've been out there. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. The fact is, most of this stuff is just not viable. And I know there'll be people going, oh, we've got cost savings on our budget. At the same time, they don't even want to look at the real facts. Um, I should know. I do all the, I analyze buildings. I specialize in asset management. I sit and analyze stuff all day long. And I can tell you exactly what is wrong with a building just from the information that I've got or I know is missing. I've had buildings with all the fire shutters and things that have never been opened since they've been installed 15 years ago. I've had buildings where fire alarm systems don't even work. Hospitals with generators aren't even connected. I've had a lot of stuff over the years, and I'm not talking one or two things. I can take any building, any hospital, about anything, and I bet you I could find some major faults on it. There is problems with things like steam engine, uh, steam boilers in some of the hospitals for heating. Um, they should have been replaced 15, 20 years ago. They're leaking all over the place. They're dangerous. But you know what? Clean bill of health. And this is the problem. Because as long as the FM company is saying everything's fine, the NHS and others will say exactly the same. Because the FM company is the responsible party. And this was one of the problems that's a big problem in FM. They have transferred the liability from the hospital the, or business to an FM company. So if it blows up, give some, get salmonella outbreak, whatever, it's the FM company's fault. Now, the other thing you get with an FM company is you look at how often directors hop around because they move from contract to contract to contract. They're not locked in to a contract for five years. They are constantly hopping around. They're constantly hopping responsibility. And I could broaden this out and give a lot more, but it sounds more personal as if I've got some sort of vendetta. I haven't. The problem I have is quite simply, there's a few people that share the same... Um, insights as me that sooner or later we're going to have a major disaster in the UK that's been caused by bad maintenance, poor maintenance or no maintenance. Um, the reason I know there's a lot of things with no maintenance is because there's a lot of things with no maintenance records. They have not been updated. They do not know that some of this stuff even exists. Um, yeah, I, can, I mean, I'll leave it there. But I'll tell you now, fundamentally, the FM companies haven't been run properly. And fundamentally, things like the NHS and others, prison services, um, they're, they're very, very badly run. Um, they don't really have enough, well, often don't have enough budget, not going to get any more money. But often there are some things that aren't even a bit of common sense. For example, you have a hospital this size, you build an annex on it, and then you decide to build it into a super hospital, make it much bigger, and maybe get rid of the bit in the middle, and then find out that, oh, hang on a minute, um, the population growth in this area has got bigger. Um, we'll keep everything. But the maintenance staff is still the same. They haven't upped the budget for the new buildings. They've just assumed they'll carry on as normal. Well, normal didn't involve the other buildings they've added to it. And that's the crisis in the UK that is coming. And I may sound a bit of a whistleblower, but I'll be honest with you. I really, I want the FM industry to change. I think there has to be more transparency. I think there needs to be more compliance. I think there needs to be more legalities around this. Because things like Glenfell Fire would not have happened if it was actually more transparent. Because you can't tell me that the information seems to have just disappeared or whatever. I'll tell you what, 
I wouldn't be surprised if somebody was internally promoted into being a person that could sign off this work that has had no training whatsoever. It wouldn't be the first time I've come across it. Um, it's often used in facilities management. It's often used in other areas because it's cheap. It's cheap labor where you may ha should have a qualified architect, surveyor, or whatever, but instead you can get this person that's 25 and sort of working towards their degree or haven't got a degree, but the 20 grand cheaper and will actually take the job and they've worked in construction a little bit. Um, they end up with these roles. They don't know about the compliance. They're often relying on the companies that are supplying the equipment or whatever to do their job for them, which means you often get overpricing. I've, sp I've spent a lot of time actually dealing with companies and other entities that have been in that situation where they've had people basically signing off at everything because they have no idea what anything costs. And several companies have been caught overcharging for things. Um, but, I mean, I could be expansive on it. But the whole point with me is with Carillion Collapse, I seen it three years ago. Um, I will be honest, they tried to sack me before I left uh, because I was actually... Well, there was a racism issue at work. It wasn't a major one, but I was just bringing it up as a, a an issue because I'd already handed my notice in anyway. Um, but the point being, not that I was the racist, there was somebody in work was racist towards my wife. <laughs> so um, the point being is it wasn't a major issue for me. I was just highlighting it. I was going anyway. And they tried to force me out of the business towards the end. Try to get me before I left. That was the interesting thing. Um, which I found really, really strange. Because the fact is, I've been working with Quillian for an, at least a decade. And to do something so weaselly like that. Um, but at the end of the day, I know where all the problems are in a lot of these contracts. NHS, prison services, you take your pick. I, I've analyzed all the data. I know exactly where the problems are. And that's what they were, I assume they were hoping wouldn't come to light. Um, but then again, I've never signed anything that actually said that I can't talk about this stuff. I mean, yes, I've got my employment contract sort of thing. But beyond that, no. And at the same time, they actually messed up my sabbatical. I was, I was off for a while because um, I was moving my family from Philippines over to Spain. Even with that, they messed it up. They'd actually cancelled and terminated my contract. So when I went back, in theory, I never even had a contract of employment, which would explain why when they did the pay review in April, I got it near Christmas. Welcome to the world of Carillion. Um, but... Carillion was no accident. There's a lot of people walked away with a lot of money. Robbing Peter to pay Paul is part of the game. And it's not my game. And I would like to actually enforce a lot of changes. I do have a very good idea on how to make the world a better place. Um, fundamentally, by changing some of the ownership. Because one of the main problems you get with the data relating to assets is, A, it's obsolete. B, the data ownership is often down to the FM company and not the client because often the client doesn't want to pay for it. But guess what? If you're a smart enough client, you'd actually understand you pay for it all the time. Every time there's a new contract, they take it out, the contract money. So if you actually owned it and managed it yourself, you would actually save yourself hundreds of thousands of pounds and I'm not joking. I'm not talking one or two. I'm talking hundreds of thousands. Um, just on a small contract, it's £120,000 for a few weeks' work. Um, yeah, I mean, if you take up one hospital, you're talking about £120,000. If you're talking um, 600 hospitals and clinics, several million. And yet, a lot of this data is messed up. I'll tell you now, prison services, 
I think they're on their third or fourth attempt now. How many millions have been spent on that? Thanks for watching.